get the kids involved in an activity. If they've done their chores and they've done their reading and they've done playing, then they're allowed to watch some TV. And then during that time, I spend it focusing on coding because by the time they are in bed at night, I am exhausted and my brain does not function in the same capacity that it does when I wake up and I have my coffee in the morning. Sure. So that's kind of basically my day and, and trying to get through it and being as productive as possible. And I will say I pretty much never sit down during the day. There's always something happening. <laughs> sure. <laughs> always up and, and moving around. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Would you say that, or how would you say, let's put it that way, rather than add a, uh, ask a leading question, <laughs> your background in the humanities, would you say that it has been helpful or harmful in your new endeavor as a coder? Oh, it's definitely been helpful. Um, I think that I always tell my students or told my students that, that, you know, I was teaching core classes, so everybody okay. had to take it. Nobody wanted to be there. So why are we reading these books and poems and plays? And I would say literature helps us to practice for real life. It helps us to understand each other, to develop empathy, to develop emotion. But it also asks us to decode meaning and to think deeply about the things that we're reading. And in these ways, one, I think that you develop soft skills by reading literature because you're interested in things like communicating with human beings and developing empathy. So I think it's allowed me to work with a variety of people um, who come from very different backgrounds and have different challenges. And so I never assume that somebody should be in a particular place. Um, I think that's really harmful to say like, Hey, this is really easy. So you'll get this. I like that just really, um, irks me when people say that because you just don't know. Yeah. Um, but also that decoding meaning when we're looking deeply at literature, we're, it's training us to analyze things and to focus and to concentrate. And those are the skills that you need when you're coding because you are, you're decoding things as you are coding. Um, and, and so in that way, you know, it creates that focus. And both things, I think, also help us to understand the world around us. Oh, sorry, the world around us. Yeah, definitely. So as somebody who then approached um, tech from, again, a non-traditional type of mm -hmm. background, what is what advice would you give to somebody else who's probably who are listening to this and they're thinking, I want to make a career change or, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm really busy. I think this, this sounds like something I could I could do. What would you tell them um, on like some of the best s steps or techniques that you've used to help them get into tech with a non-traditional background? Yeah, I would say, first of all, find a community of people that will support you and help you. So I have Moms Can Code. I have Flatiron. I'm very active on Twitter. I love being on Twitter because I found a supportive community of coders there. I know that's not the same for everyone else, but um, there's there have been a lot of good mentor figures for me there. Um, I would also say that like anything else, it gets hard. Everything in life gets hard, whether that's just everyday things, parenting, finding time to do the things that you love. Um, but just remember that when you're coding and it gets hard, these other things that you've overcome in your life were hard too. You just kept pushing forward. Mm -hmm. So it's worth it if you like it to push through those hard times. Um, and you'll find that developers who have been doing it for 20 years have also said that it gets really difficult. So um, that's why having a support system, I think, is a great place to start, especially in an organization that has both new people and experienced mentors who are there to help you. Mm -hmm. um, I also think trying out free resources is the way to go first because um, I don't know about you, but I don't like wasting money. So, <laughs> um, there are so many great resources out there. Free code camp is an amazing resource. Flatiron school has free resources on there. Um, start there, see how you like it, see what language you want to learn. Um, and then go from there. Mm -hmm. 
So you made you made an interesting comment about pushing through difficult times. Mm-hmm. So in your own life, like coding or not coding, how do you approach times either where you're fearful or they're difficult, yeah. and and how do you keep pushing through those to the other side? Yeah, well, I think for me, you know, almost dying um, kind of puts things in perspective. So <laughs> definitely. Um, for, for me, when I'm coding, I think that I experience less of the frustration because I went through this intensely difficult period of time in my life. And you don't have to almost die to go through that. You know, it might be a transition from like um, childhood to adulthood was really difficult for you. So I think putting that in perspective and thinking like, hey, I made it through that. But also, I think there are two other things that are important. And one, it's being honest, not just with yourself, but with the people around you. Um, so I found like during my trauma, I was always a very independent person, but I was literally stuck on a couch and I couldn't move after my surgery. And so I had to tell people, this is how I'm feeling or this is what I need. And that honesty was difficult for me um, because I had been so used to being independent Um, but in the long run, it's benefited me so much because I could admit, Hey, listen, I need some help here. If you're getting into coding or you're getting into a a different career or something in your life, that's challenging. There are amazing people out there who are willing to mentor and you just have to be able to ask or to put it out there. And I've even found that tweeting about it, like, here's my place of honesty. I'm lost right now. I have had so many people respond in positive ways that I never thought imaginable. Um, so I, I actually um, had been coding on a Chromebook and then I tweeted about it and someone sent me a MacBook. So Wow. <laughs> yeah. Talk about amazing. I never would have expected that ever to happen. But I was at like a difficult place because I didn't have the right equipment. Mm-hmm. I couldn't afford the right equipment. And someone who could said, let me help you out. Um, so I think, you know, being honest and being vulnerable. So those are the two things that I think um, can really help you individually. But it also, that's also what helps people grow as a community of people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the other thing, you know, all those years of literature. I don't know why I didn't get it in my head. This is. This is what the author is saying. Now do it in your own life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's wonderful. In so in your in your journey thus far, what would you say has been the best advice you've ever received? Um, I think the best advice is just to persevere, keep going through it because even in the times when you think you aren't good, you probably are. I mean, people are always um are always looking things up when they're in this world. And there's no shame in that. It's okay to not know the answer. Um, So to keep pushing forward through that. Um, I also, this is, this is not advice that I received, but Mm -hmm. I was recently reading an Ada Lovelace um, biography. And she has this beautiful quote that talks about, um, about the mathematical sciences. And she says they're not just truths. They're not just truths, but they're about beauty and symmetry and logical completeness. And for me, that really helped to inspire me because she's talking about mathematical things in terms of the beautiful and how if we look at both of these things, it can help us to understand the world around us. And to me, that made so much sense because we're always hearing these things about left brain people or right brain people and logical versus artistic. And I don't think that we need to differentiate the two. And I think both of us help us to understand the world around us. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you. So Becca, thank you so much uh, for your time this morning. And definitely you are a a, well, a fantastic example of of (laughs) someone who's persevered despite uh, difficult times. So thank you for telling me that story. If the listeners would like to uh, communicate with you, have your website or get a, get a hold of you, what is the best way they can do that? 
Um, Twitter and Instagram, I'm pretty active on, so you can follow me. It's at Becca H W. So it's B E K A H and then another H W. So two H's and a W because it's my last name is Harat Weigel. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, so feel free to follow me or DM me. I'm always open to talking to people about my experiences or helping you with what you need. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I will put those in the show notes so people can click right through. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Advance Your Hour podcast. If you like this episode, please go into iTunes and give us a five-star rating. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button so that every single time I release a new episode, it will go directly to you without even thinking about it. If you're interested in hearing older episodes, please go to AdvanceYourArt.com where you can find the catalog of everything I've done so far, as well as contact information and projects I'm working on. Thank you again, and have a great day.